So, uh, hello everyone. Uh, so today I'll be talking about global phase diagram of uh, charge neutral graphene in the quantum Hall regime for generic interactions. I guess there are some jargons involved here, but hopefully it will get clear if I go along. And, and if you are interested in details of this talk, you can look at this uh, article, which has been published very recently. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, so before going to the quantum hall regime, let me first give you a brief introduction of the graphene itself. So I guess you all know, but anyway, let me give it a hair. Uh, so the graphene is a hexagonal uh, lattice structure of two inequivalent carbon atoms. We label it by A and B sub lattice here. And uh, one can, to get the most uh, more electronic properties of this Hamiltonian, one can write a simple nearest neighbor tight binding Hamiltonian like this. And uh, and if you're interested in the bulk properties of the graphene, you can uh, do the Fourier transform and go to the Brillouin zone. And you can calculate the band structure here. The interesting fa fact you will find that uh, the graphene, uh, the, the con if you look at the conduction band and valence band, that touches in two inequivalent points in the Brillouin zone. We call it the K and K prime uh, in the nomenclature. These are also called uh, Dirac cones because uh, if one interested in the low energy properties of this Hamiltonian, uh, you can, uh, written up to the first, uh, first order in momentum term away from this Dirac points, and you will get this uh, linear uh, Hamilton. And where the sigma is the Pauli matrices, but acts on this A, B sublet space. Okay. Now, uh, if you look at, uh, now let's say you talk about the inner Landau level limit, where we put a very large non zero orbital magnetic field. and then in the lowest order of piles, aprox, uh, pile substitution, you can substitute the momentum by this vector potential terms, and here A is the vector potential, and you will get this Hamiltonian. Now, if you do the quantization techniques, and you can uh, you can calculate the spectrum for this Hamiltonian, you will get this the energy uh, will have this structure. And the interesting fact is that you will, so initially without magnetic field, you have this Dirac cone, uh, like structure now in presence of magnetic field, you will get flat Landau levels and we with all these integers, which are running from minus infinity to plus infinity. And the interesting fact is that if you look at the, if you put this magnetic length, that is the characteristic length, length scale that comes in this, uh, in this systems. And if you put this here, you'll see that the energy is actually square root proportional to the, of the B. And that is very different from the non-relativistic Case where the electron moves in a parabolic dispersion, and if you do the, if you follow the similar prescription, you will see that the here the energy depends on the cyclotron energy, and that that is proportional to the b. And the crucial fact of the square root dependence that is different from this the usual uh, non-relativistic electrons uh, will be coming handy in our talk. Okay, and now now for all of this uh, today's talk, we are I am mostly interested in this n equal to zero Landau level and see its physical con consequences. Now, uh, as you know, as before going to the n equal to zero Landau level, you can say that each Landau level is fourfold degenerate because there are two flavor of spins and two flavor of valleys involved for creating this Landau level. And now for the one and an interesting properties of n, n equal to zero Landau level is that if you calculate the electronic wave function at a particular valley, you will see that the wave function is localized on a particular sub lattice and you will get a perfect uh, locking between the sub lattice and valley, valley indices. So if you specify a valley, it's automatically say that the, your electrons are localized on a particular sub lattice and the zero in other sub lattice. So you can, const you can construct the many body Hilbert space using these four non-interacting degenerate levels. Now the in Roman closure, where, when we say there's a charge neutral graphene, that is the, when the filling fraction is defined to be zero, that uh, so two out of these four n equal to zero Landau level has to fill. Now we can think about the in non-interacting limits; these are all degenerate. So you need uh, electron inter interactions, which play more crucial role to select some linear to select some linear combination of the spin and valley indices, and that in general dictates the nature of the ground state. So it was it it was so so we need electron inter interaction, but it was found very recently. Uh, sorry, very early that. Uh, if you only include the SU4 symmetric long range Coulomb interaction, it doesn't actually choose any kinds of uh, ordering in the systems because it, it doesn't discriminate between any spin and valley indices in this system. So, but, so then uh, in, in a uh, very seminal work by Kharitonov in 2012, where he proposed that using some ultra anisotropic ultra short range electron interaction, 
and the Zeeman field that is always present in this uh, quantum wall experiments, you will get four different phases. Now, this ferromagnet phase is the simply spin polarized phase, all spin are lying up in, uh, in all the sub lattice. The cantate phase is the, it's, it's not completely anti ferromagnets, it's that I have shown the uh, cartoon picture here. So, if you look at the electron and in two sub lattice A and B, they have some in plane component that's actually anti ferromagnet, but they have also some ferromagnet component, uh, component along the Zeeman direction. And the Kekule distorted or the bond distor uh, distortion phase is like the, if, if graphene has this benzene like structure. So there are three uh, bonds of these six bonds are filled in the KD uh, diagram and other three bonds are empty. And the charge density wave order is a simple, simple charge, charge modulation is in sense that one of the sub is filled and the other sub is empty. So uh, it is quite nice. So now uh, comes to the experiment uh, that is more important in the, uh, all of these uh, works also, because uh, so after uh, these uh, works, there have some experiments by uh, Andri Yango, which actually seems to, uh, where they look at the two terminal conductance measurement close to the charge neutral neutrality point in the graphene, where they found that it seems to consistent with the Kharitono space diagram, where uh, they found that uh, their conclusion was that they, is they found a continuous phase transition from the cantate phase to the ferromagnet phase. And their conclusion is like this. So let's say, uh, if you look at this line, it depends on the Zeeman field. So if you somehow in, in very low Zeeman field, if you, let's say, start in this point, if you increase the Zeeman field, this line will go like this, and you will end up getting to the cantate phase to the ferromagnet phase. This simply explanation that seems to work uh, in these settings. But there are recent scanning, tunneling microscopic measurements uh, by two, uh, two groups in uh, uh, published very recently, where they found where where they can look at the actual electron density of the uh, in the uh, electron in the graphene samples and they reveal sometimes the Kekule bond order or the charge density wave order. So clearly, uh, so the so the actual nature of the symmetry broken state in the new equal to zero graphene is still not completely resolved because uh, because if you look at the if you follow the Kharitono phase, you will see that there are four different phases, but these four are different phases are separate separated. And, you, and if you, you can't explain whether, why there is a bond order, even if there is a, in some experiment, it shows a candidate to ferromagnet transition. So we, in our uh, calculation, we get some resolution for, to get away this fact. And, and what we found is that in our, in our calculation, in some parameter space, you can get a coexistent region uh, that's denoted by this blue part, where we found that the system prefers to have some coexistent order parameter has both kinds of bond order and the canted order. And we believe the system, most of the experimental systems lies in this, uh, uh, in, in this window. And hopefully that can explain the, all the experimental findings. And there are other, you can also get some other coexistent phase green sorts, uh, denoted by this set, green uh, setting where they have the both CDW and the ferromagnet coexistence. Uh, um, so, uh, so let me just uh, give a one slide details of the what uh, what are the Hamilton and the parameters we have in, used in this calculation. So it's a zero Landau level. So the kinetic energy is completely coerced. So and the, so the one body terms are has two two effects, uh, two terms. One is this Zeeman coupling, and another interesting experimental uh, one body term is the Halley Zeeman coupling because in all the experiments people have to put the um, graphene flake in, in top of some substrate like the HBN. And because of the, how the, this graphene flake is aligned with the substrate, it can give rise to some uh, sublattice baking term that's, that's given by this uh, valley Zeeman term. And also you have some, uh, these are the four fermion interaction term we have considered. And if you closely look at the interaction term, it behaves like XXZ interaction, but acts on the valley space, okay? And the crucial point we have, introduced in our calculation is that we assume that this interaction strength is depend in general depends on the momentum and acts on the scale of the magnetic length. And because of this momentum dependence, you, when you do the Hartree-Fock, when you solve this problem using the Hartree-Fock approximation, the Hartree couplings will be in general dependent, Hartree coupling that's the Q equal to zero term will be different than the Fock couplings. And we have tuned these parameters independently to get some kinds of phase diagram, okay? So one other interesting fact is that we found that the EV, that the valley Zeeman also plays some important uh, tunability parameter in these experiments because 
initially let's say at ev0 if you don't get a coexistence phase you can tune this to get a, at some intermediate value you can get a some coexistence phase and we believe that experimentally can tune this and gets get qualitatively matching with our prediction and the other experimental fact is like you can tune the zeeman field uh, by tilting the perpendicular field in the plane by keeping all the parameters fixed and even doing this uh, you can you can track the evolution of the order parameter and but here we also saw that see that if you initially start with the bond order uh, phase if you tune the zeeman field in middle you get a uh, window where it has both the canter and the uh, ferromagnet, uh, sorry, bond order parameter and initially goes to the ferromagnet phase. So we believe that we can uh, use this, you can, uh, um, with this, you can actually uh, solve the experimental puzzle and, uh, and using Hartree-Fock approximation, we, you, we found some coexistent phases. And now let me just uh, give a one uh, other experimental signatures which can detect in this uh, calculation is the STEM measurement, of course, can directly detect this bond order or charge order in the samples, but the canter antiferromagnet order is detection is very tedious in these experiments. But one thing is one can try to look for is that the, the canter order breaks the even spin symmetry spontaneously. So it will have some low energy goldstone modes in the system and it will affect in the bulk thermal conductivity measurements. So with this, I guess I want to thank you for listening to this.